Um, thanks, Jonathan, and thanks, uh, Rabbi Soloveitchik, for a very, very interesting remarks. Um, I actually got interested in this question back in 2016 uh, when Shimon Peres died. Now, a lot of obituaries at the time described him as Israel's last living founder, and this, this seemed to me way off. Peres was only 25 in 1948. All of his achievements followed the establishment of the state. And I realized that here we had a case of what might be called founder creep. Um, my idea of a founder was formed 50 years ago when I read Amos Elon's book, The Israelis, Founders and Sons. And it opens with a very vivid description of Israel's 20th anniversary parade in 1968. Remember, this is the first after the Six Day War. Elon described the aged men and women in the VIP reviewing stand. And I quote him because it is very vivid. He said, he wrote, their skins are parched, their taut faces lined by deep furrows, their heads snow white or bald. They are now stooped, burned out by the fires of their youth, and yet surrounded by the sovereign power of a nation which half a century before had been but a figment of their wild imaginations." End quote. Uh, David Ben-Gurion, who was at that point past 80, was among them. And these were the founders, and this was their moment uh, of triumph. And with rare exceptions, all of their work was well behind them at that point. On that day, of course, Menachem Begin's great work was still ahead of him. Uh, so should we regard him as a founder of the State of Israel? And my answer to that question is no. I, I grasp the need of a huge segment of the Israeli body, body politic to have a hero present at the founding. Uh, so it's politic to call Begin a founder, uh, but it's history, it's not accurate. And uh, I'm here as a historian. Now, the first argument is almost too simple. Begin was much too young and much too late to be counted among the founders. But the founders, not the founders of Zionism, but of Israel, uh, were born in the 1880s or the 1890s. They came mostly from Russia before or just after the First World War. And by 1948, when Israel declared independence, they'd spent most of their lives in Eretz Israel. Uh, in 1948, Ben-Gurion was already the old man, Hazaken. He was 61. He'd been in the land for 42 years. The founder of the Haganah and the Palmach, Yitzhak Sadeh, was 57. He'd been in the country for 28 years. Uh, his nickname, by the way, was also Hazaken. Uh, already in 1948, both Ben Gurion, with his, his tufts of white hair, and Sadeh, with this flowing white beard, they looked like ancient prophets, and so did many of the founders. And thanks to their efforts, a Jewish state existed years before it was declared. I'm going to quote the, the British Royal Commission report of 1937. The Jewish agency has created a complete administrative apparatus. This powerful and effective organization amounts in fact to a government existing side by side with the mandatory government, end of quote. So before the first world, the second world war, this powerful apparatus governed and defined the lives of half a million Jews. And, and what of Begin? Bear in mind the dates. He only arrives in Palestine in 1942 at the age of 29. A few years later, when Israel declares independence, he'd been in the country all of six years, most of them in hiding. He was only 34. And by the way, the average age of the signers of Israel's Declaration of Independence was 53. In relation to the, the real founders, he was a new immigrant, a young upstart, and an underground shadow. Now, Begin, in fact, I would argue, belonged to the next generation, not the founders, but what I would call the builders. Uh, most of them were born in the decade around World War I, some already in Eretz Israel. Uh, many became commanders, like Begin, in 1948. Uh, and let me give you the cluster with birth dates. And as you'll see from these dates, you know, all of these people were in the cradle when the founders were lobbying Lord Balfour or fighting in the Jewish Brigade or settling Tel Hai. Uh, 1911, Yisrael Galili, builder of the Haganah. 1912, Yisrael Harel, builder of the Mossad. 1913, Menachem Begin, builder of Etzel. 1915, Moshe Dayan, builder of the IDF. 1915, Abba Iban, builder of the Foreign Service. Uh, 1915, Yitzhak Shamil, builder of Lehi. 1917, Yigael Yadin, builder of the IDF. 1918, Yigal Alon, builder of the Palmach. 1918, Chaim Herzog, builder of IDF intelligence. Now, I never met a founder of Israel. They were all dead uh, by the time I arrived in Israel 40 years ago in 1981. Uh, but this generation, the builders, was still running. Begin was prime minister. I never met him. 
but I met Diane and Iban and Alon and my wife treated Galili uh, and no one at the time regarded any of them as founders. They were the pupils and the successors of the founders. And Begin was also a pupil and successor to a founder, Vladimir Jabotinsky. And that's exactly how Begin saw himself. The fact that Jabotinsky died too soon in 1940, it didn't catapult Begin into the position of a founder in his place. There was simply this empty leadership gap in the 32 years in age that separated Jabotinsky from Begin. Now, so much for simple chronology, I think it should suffice, but let me come to the second argument, um, the argument that, okay, Begin was a latecomer, uh, but he played a crucial role in driving the British from Palestine and breaking the British will to stay, and surely that makes him a founder. So did the Etzel and Lehi, the Irgun and the Stern group, drive the British from Palestine? Uh, well, here we're in the realm of interpretation. Uh, the evidence doesn't lie in the stories we tell ourselves. It doesn't lie in the historians of the, of the Etzel. It lies in the British archives. And that means we have to rely on historians of the British Empire. And they differ. Now, my own sense from reading them is that the British weren't nearly that fragile. They didn't come to rule a quarter of humankind by being squeamish about taking casualties. They had just lost 400,000 fighting men not only to defeat Hitler, but to preserve the British Empire. And they'd also lost 70,000 civilians. Uh, ben Gurion visited London at the start of the Blitz. And this is what he wrote, and, uh, and I quote him. I am dumbfounded by the inner confidence of this wonderful nation. It is as if nothing can shock it and nothing undermines its faith. End of quote. Um, for which in 1942, the entire issue said, thank God and the British Eighth Army turn back Rommel in the Egyptian desert. It's hard to prove that the battle-hardened Great Britain of those days was driven out of Palestine by some bombs and assassinations. At least these don't loom large in the British internal debates. They did worry, they did worry that if Jewish refugees were to enter Palestine under the Union Jack, their position in the Arab world would collapse. So better to leave Palestine to the UN, and that still left them with Suez, the oil, and their bases in, in Arab lands. The heroism of Begin and his comrades in taking on the British Empire is undeniable. And the idea that the British lion ran off before a handful of resolute Jews makes a very good story, and I like it. But is it good history? Uh, and I think the kindest one can say is it's unproven. So I'll, I'll conclude with this speculation. If Ben Gurion had died at the age of 63, how would he be remembered today? Uh, that would have been 1949, after the declaration of the state. I think it's obvious he'd still be re revered today as the founder of modern Israel. And if Begin had died at age 63, uh, now I didn't choose that day, that age at random. In, in April 1977, the 63-year-old Begin suffered a massive heart attack. Uh, this was a few weeks before the electoral upheaval, the Ma'apach, which finally took him to the premiership. Uh, he was too ill to campaign in 1977. So assume for argument's sake that he hadn't survived that heart attack. How would he be remembered today? And I submit we'd recall him as a bit player in the lead up to 1948 and as a failed politician thereafter, which is to say that his greatness lay not in what came before 1948 or before 1977, but what came after. That's when he forged ahead to Israel's first and most important peace agreement, his most lasting legacy, which is to say that Begin wasn't a founder of Israel, but he deserves to be remembered and revered as the builder of peace.